morning to another episode of Marijuana Channel One. Today I am streaming live from MJ BizCon here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where the cannabis industry has taken a break from the pandemic and re-emerged as a community to uh, exchange information and build community and explore opportunity. So today it's my pleasure to uh, meet with Alan Kwan, who is one of the founders of One Tech. Uh, it is a new, um, what I've called financial technology platform uh, for the cannabis space. Alan has a very interesting background, so uh, I'm looking forward to a great conversation. Good morning, Alan. Good morning. Thanks uh, welcome. For yeah, welcome to Marijuana Channel One. Um, so you're Australian. You have a background in uh, banking, and you've got some really interesting investments in things like uh, vision technology for the blind and cybersecurity. Uh, you've done some really interesting things. How did you get into the crazy cannabis financial technology space? Well, it all began with, um, you know, sort of hard money lending. And, um, you know, I was, I'm very diversified in my investments. I run two public companies. And I also run a fund that looks at, uh, that invests in biotechnology, hence my investment into the bio, bionic guy in Australia. And um, I was in property development in the US and I sold out of those developments and had some free cash. And um, I was approached by some cannabis guys wanting to look at, um, you know, buying warehouses, et cetera. So I was doing convertible notes and it's fairly easy to do um, loans here given it's community-based law and you know you can run promissory notes so essentially that's how it started and and that sort of piqued my interest and you know these these guys that are you know hugely successful in their field but unable to you know obviously um have the proper financial support from and so i, I sort of looked at the legislation and tried to understand the dichotomy um, I read the Cole memo and tried to see, um, you know, how I could participate and how I could sort of solve this thing. Coincidentally, so serendipitously, we have a number of investments in QR code technologies out of China. Um, and also I have a technology firm in Singapore that I've been involved with the last, I've been a director in the last 20 years. And we are e ERP specialists. So we've been very involved with partners with SAP and we've been involved in the Monopoly ETF platform over there. So combining these skill sets, I thought, oh, well, and I was approached by um, a reverse ATM company. And I, so I flew over to Blackhawk Technology, put in $100 and I thought, oh, wow, it got stuck. And how are you supposed to um, manage these hardware, you know, in, in about how many thousands of dispensaries across the United States. And, and doing further study, I thought, oh, well, it's probably not kosher to do workarounds. And so in, for, prior to COVID, I was flying to Sacramento. I met with Lori Ajax. And at that time, there was the vaping issue. And she was suggesting, oh, you know, you should scan the QR code. But a static QR code doesn't re mean anything unless it's part of a providence chain. So what the Singapore government has done with the with the advent, with the popularity of um, QR code based wallets, they no longer have that control. So they, you know, um, decided to regulate the QR code in respect to payment. So there's what they call SGQR. So they will disseminate the original QR code. So our company, we bought the rights to a QR code scanning technology that, were, that pre precedes WeChat. You know, in, in, in China, 98% of the population pay by you know, scanning QR code, Alipay, WePay, that sort of thing. So I was able to meet the SAP scientists that developed that technology. So I took the rights to the US, hoping that I could work with a federally governed bank to solve this safe banking uh, with for this um, issue of banking. And so I teamed up with um, a firm here in, in, I mean, a firm in California, Umberg Zipser, and the founder of that, um, Tom Umberg, who's a US-based um, a Californian senator, um, was 
very much involved in trying to, you know, shape that, you know, landscape and be involved in safe banking. So as you know, I met with um, city mayors and said, oh, well, you know, uh, it's really a workaround. I mean, even the money that they take. Right. So what one tech can do is, but it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a process where everyone, all the participants have to be involved. And if the bureau or any agency was to disseminate that code, then it will have to run across from manufacturing to, you know, com, you know lab, laboratory tests, et cetera. And so that sort of information can then be embedded within the QR code. So it's something that, you know, it's cheap to generate a QR code. It doesn't cost anything. You don't need infrastructure change, um, sort of major costs involved, CapEx in, in terms of running your business. We met with the owner of Metric and we were able to, you know, work with them and become a sort of a approved um, partner in that. So we can integrate with almost uh, with every sort of software around. And that would then mean, what, what, what does that essentially mean is that, you know, in terms of the marijuana amendments, they look at, okay, you know, product not crossing state lines. Um, you have to, you know, obviously understanding that you're not selling to minors and um, you're able to, and we are able to set from a banking point of view, what would then be a suspicious activity report. So if there's any discrepancy between your stock and what you've sold, Etc. And we all know that, you know, a lot of businesses have to do that to survive. But, you know, it's almost tightening the screws and, make, and, and ensuring that there is no money laundering. And you could only really achieve that if you have that providence chain. And so well, when I met... Well, when so I really so tell, uh, let me just interrupt there um, because you're making lots of points and, and I want to make sure to, to capture those. But um, tell me where, what, what problem are you solving in the existing marketplace? Because... Um, you know, we, we've, we've had legal cannabis now, you know, seven, eight years. And uh, while banking at first was, you know, very difficult to get, there has been a whole, you know, I'll call it middleware layer of, of intermediaries who are facilitating everything from uh, cashless payments to online banking, uh, you know, um, uh, everything but credit cards you know, uh, is, 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 is being pretty mainstream these days. Um, so tell me, you know, tell me what, 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 where the, where the improvement is here uh, on your platform. Well, I, I suppose it's um, on a number of things. Um, I think that there's sort of, as I said, when I met with the, um, the uh, Department of Business Oversight, whatever they're called, um, they really did not like uh, sort of any workaround. So they really wanted to have an understanding of um, or, inf or, or have the data and have the information about where everything is moving and how, what sort of... Um, Are you uh, talking about like FinCEN or the California... Yeah, FinCEN, yeah. So it's almost like working with FinCEN to ensure that, you know, um, that the banks are sort of compliant in that, in that respect. So... You know, and, and, you know, we've been looking at um, various uh, sort of um, uh, issues where you could really launder and, and sort of where more nefarious sort of money can enter. Right, right. And so, so no, I, I, I really wanted to get sort of specific because every state, I mean, there, there are a couple of challenges in, in rolling out this kind of system. One is that we're in a very balkanized industry where every state has its own regulations. Uh, and then, and then, even more important, its own uh, methods of enforcement, uh, right? What the regulations are and what you can really get away with; those are are, are different in every state. And there's lots of new states coming online, and at the same time, there's federal movement. So you reference the Safe Banking Act, uh, which you know for the first time seems to have some bipartisan support at the Senate level, uh, and really Chuck Schumer and folks like Corey uh, 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 Booker saying, no, we've got to attach that to the MORE Act and make sure that there's social equity and criminal justice reform. So, and, and the regulators have all nationalized. So you're, you're sort of moving towards a federal. So on one notion I see, well, this is really getting normalized. Why do we need a new system in a dynamic evolving marketplace? And then number two is, um, 
drill down on if every state already has a, uh, a traceability uh, compliance mechanism. You mentioned metric, one of the biggest. Uh, so every POS system, every state has that. In places like Washington, um, which is part of the National Cannabis Regulator Association, they've moved away from that. They're, they're moving off of the old MJ Freeway uh, technology onto, and basically saying, hey, you guys track your own stuff and just report to us through reports like you would do the, the IRS through CSV files. Yeah. And spreadsheets. yeah, you hit it right on the head. And that's where, um, you know, you know, there's a new uh, head of the BCC now. So I think, uh, you know, I was only able to just leave the country, you know, we're from Melbourne. So can you imagine the kind of life we were leading 365 days in lockdown and, you know, not being able to go more than three miles outside your home. So being in Vegas, it's just been a crazy experience. But that's what I'm saying. And and so I want to hear that about what you're seeing in Vegas. And I I think the industry is ready to take it to the next level is the vibe I'm getting in all the meetings I'm having. That's right. And we want to give the technology out and not be, you know, and become very cost effective. So essentially giving out the technology, but it's more about, okay, well, you know, we've had this solution. It's been around, it's a proven platform. We're able to integrate with you know, um, sort of any software out there. We don't want to do the seed to sale. I mean, Metric is doing a great job with that. So as I said to um, the owner, Jeff, we're not competitive, we're inclusive. So it's something that, of course, we really need to lobby on a federal level because then, um, you know, they will make the banking. I mean, banking is governed federally. And then so we need to really sort of align that. So with state interest... So your customers are really government regulators uh, and financial, the financial industry, right? You, you're looking for adoption on, on their, their side with the notion then that the, consu- the uh, B2B side, the licensees, the MSOs will then adopt whatever uh, standards, uh, the financial industry and, and the yeah. combined government ag- agrees upon. That's right. And, you know, in, in terms of the financial inclusion, and that's what we're really wanting to solve, access to, um, you know, really better interest rates instead of, you know, people like myself doing hard money lending, you know, at astronomical rates. And as, you know, you know, it gets more, you um, sort of margins sort of dwindle, you know, I think um, that sort of leaves a lot of smaller players out there. So that, that's, that's really the dynamic. And I was going to ask, uh, is your system, is this an MSO targeted? You, you mentioned, you know, ERP uh, platform. So, you know, that's big business. Uh, I think what's happening in the industry is uh, kind of two dynamics. One, you're seeing a roll up of those mom and pops uh, by the MSOs who are coming in and uh, and understanding that it's more than just buying market share that you really have to understand the vagaries of uh, the consumer uh, buying patterns and the culture. Uh, you know, Washington state is a lot different than Massachusetts, uh, which is a lot different from Michigan and California, right? So, you know, every place is a little bit different um uh yeah it's been one of the most complex environments and um you know usually i'm able to sort of identify hey where we should go and i'm I'm, you know i've taken products commercialized them taken to public uh, you know into a public company but um navigating this landscape is is extremely complex because you know different agendas and privacy laws all that sort of thing but as you know, QR code is something that can transcend B to B to C. And um, it's probably one of the only cheapest forms of technologies around that can do that. But at yeah. the consumer level, yeah. you know, will customers want to give out their, you know, the government wants KYC on who's buying, right? And who's transacting. But then, you know, at the same time, um, we don't want our civil liberties um, so right. But, but, so let's talk about that, Alan. Let's talk about the reality of, of where the marketplace is today. 
Um, the reality is that nearly every cannabis retailer is uh, using some kind of loyalty program. And you're seeing companies like, you know, Spring Big and Dutchie uh, uh, getting massively uh, funded. Dutchie just took another $350 million. They're at like $3.7 billion valuation, something absurd like that. Um, uh, and so, you know, I think the consumer and, and COVID played into that, right? The consumer is looking for a cashless solution. Uh, they're looking for an easy solution. And there's some of the stigma has gone away from going in and, and using your debit card at the, at the dispensary is no longer taboo. And you're no longer worried that Wells Fargo is going to, you know, kick you out of your banking. Yeah. Um. No, I totally agree with that. And, um, but, uh, you know, you, you still, I think in terms of the privacy laws, we still need to be very careful around that. Uh, although it's, it, it's encrypted, you know, and I think it's been, um, it's been a positive thing for us in that, you know, before prior to COVID, no one really was scanning QR codes, but with well, it's nineties technology, right? That's the interesting yep. thing. That's why I wanted to talk to you about kind of can attack trends uh, you're a sophisticated investor. You, you, you know, these things, uh, the cannabis industry has always been lagging in its adoption of technology, mostly because of these federal in interdictions. Um, but, you know, we're, our media is still primarily, you know, was pri up until, you know, six months ago or a year ago, primarily magazines, we were marketing through text messaging, and now QR codes are our savior. Uh, this is stuff that I did in, you know, in the 90s. Yeah. Um, yeah, QR code, as I, you know, as you know, was, uh, is a technology, you know, that was developed really for manufacturing. But it's yeah. really, um, where our patent sits is really about the scanning and using a camera to scan it. And as I said, we've been working, um, our sort of China office has been working with some of the biggest tech companies right. in terms of further developing and also licensing that. Um, we've, we've also added a pattern around the provenance chains. Um, so how we disseminate the QR code, how it runs through from distribution to manufacture, to grow, or we can integrate it at any point with the metric system or any other seed to sale. And then, and then for deliveries, et cetera. But it's, you know, it can... With the one scan at a consumer level, you know who delivered it, which laboratory did the COA. So it gives a lot of more confidence and protection to the consumer as well in that respect. So they could, as a consumer, it'll be, you're, you're talking about integrating that QR code then into the package. So it goes from the production, the growing, the harvesting, the distillation or extraction, the packaging, the distribution, the warehousing, the retailing, and ultimately the customer then can hit this go, uh, uh, QR code and see where their product was grown, when it was harvested, and what yeah. the terpene profiles or cannabinoid profiles yes. or yeah. uh, contaminants or any of that kind of stuff. That's right. And if you have a problem, if it, was, if it wasn't a distillate problem, let's say in a vape product, and it was actually the manufacturer of the uh, device, it'll come out immediately. So you could then, you know, sort of um, mitigate any sort of outbreak or ameliorate a lot of other sort of issues. So I, I referenced, tell me where you are in the ecosystem. So I referenced uh, a number of the other cashless transaction players, folks like Paytender and AeroPay, and uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, are you competitors with those guys or are you facilitators? Are you hoping that they'll adopt? We're hoping to facil facilitate and improve upon what they're doing. And, and, you know, sort of, as I said, it has to be inclusive. If you have someone that doesn't want to participate, it makes it very hard. So it's almost, then that's why our, our so strategy really- Talk is. about standards then, right? Because if you just hit it on the head, uh, a, 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 a marketplace, a platform is only good if you get, you know, universal adoption or, or majority adoption. So in places like Washington, where they're just rejiggering the marketplace, right, they're taking, uh, they're taking um, Leaf, which is an MJ Freeway product out, and they're starting this new system. So every, I work with these guys, every one of these licensees is figuring out a new protocol. They're working with their POS systems. They're working with their integrators to build new 
uh, uh, SOPs, if you will. Um, and they're all looking to become, you know, regional or, or national players. But nobody's talking about, you know, how we're all building the rails at a little different gauge. Yeah. And I think that's where we provide that framework. And we were, and, and when we're, because we're in the ERP environment, we built a very smart middleware and we've been sort of, uh, that's, you know, five years going strong and it's a proven platform. So, and that, um, I think was, is the key, um, along with the QR code patterns, but really it's the middleware and how we could, uh, you know, do, do those integrations. So if I'm a licensee, if I'm, uh, you know, a retailer or producer processor in Washington or Oregon or California or Nevada, um, how would I interact with you? How would I, how would I adopt? How would I uh, participate in, in this platform? Um, well, at this stage, I think really we have to go top down. So you know, unless, um, so we we're sort of working with a, a city in California now, right. um, that has various licenses. So we want to do a pilot, um, sort of implementation there and see how it works in that environment. And I think that would be the test case for us. Um, uh, so you'll do that, one read one, one kind of control test market, uh, and what, try to get uh, total adoption. And from there you'll test and, and measure and tweak and, and, and iterate from there. Yeah. That's right. And we have an FDIC bank that we're working with. Um, and as you know, that's not, that's not rocket science because the pickups and all that um, in terms of handling the cash and depositing in the, in the Federal Reserve, but really, and from that level, it's, well, how do you know, where's this cash come from? And that's what right. are the, so, and that's why I, you know, it's really important um, for the future of, you know, the smaller plays and that it's an inclusive thing. And, you know, we then, can you know you don't have to rely on any other um data other than well we know the turnover etc and then you know industry standards and obviously then you know they can get the finance that they need and yeah. sort of deserve so um you're at mj bizcon we talked about how that's so nice to be out of the quarantine environment and you know everyone is enthusiastic uh, to be back. What are you seeing from a marketplace perspective? And, um, uh, you know, what are you seeing on the showroom floor from a marketplace uh, perspective? And what's your predictions for 2022? What will be the drivers of uh, cannabis technology? What will be the drivers of uh, fintech in the next uh, 12 months? What, are, what can we expect to see uh, in the legal cannabis space. Um, well, I'm not. I'm not too sure, and <laughs> I don't have any prescience over this. But I, I really hope that um, you know regulators will work with people like us in terms of trying to find a a balance and um, you know and introduce and allow technologies that um, are not too costly. Obviously, you know, with as you know, I said to the Laurie Ajax that um, you know. You know, and I know that it's always a fight between the white and the black industry, you know, but um, we, we, you really need to empower, um, you know, your, your um, sort of members in, in this respect. Right. So it's, you know, they've got to be cost effective, you know, easy to implement. Um, you know, no one wants to be, you know, spending tens of thousands in ERP and getting consultants in. So it's got to be, it's got to be easy, easy to work with. And so I think we're able to sort of um, disseminate our technology um, effectively. Well, we see uh, 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 federal banking reform for cannabis uh, businesses in the next year. Yeah. So I hope, um, I hope there are those changes, but, you know, ultimately, you know, um, the feds would never allow, you know, sort of, um, thing money to be laundered, obviously, and you know, there's there's always so that even kind of even in a regulated market, there's still going to be these uh, special protocols. Do you think? I think so. So, and so think, uh, the, the the Jeff Bezos Amazon, you're going to order it online, and and we're going to have it through your Prime and two hours or less. Is is that a is that a fantasy? 
uh, or will that be easy because the, that will be a secure transaction? AWS will then interface with your platform. I think that would be a pretty sad situation for all the smaller operators. And, you know, I don't think that's where the industry wants to be. So, yeah, that well, but where it wants to be and, and where it finds itself, right? I mean, I, I think that was where yeah. we were talking about earlier is, you know, seven, eight years ago, we were talking about workaround solutions were the lifeblood of these mom and pop grassroots entrepreneurs. We had to do whatever we could do to, to, to uh, stay in business and regulation is taxation. It's more expensive and financing is onerous and, you know, high risk and all that good stuff. And so normalization should mean that those folks who have endured that and persisted should have opportunity. And yet you're seeing um, with the onslaught of, of international investment, uh, Canadian money, um, it's the market is rolling up and, you know, big alcohol, big tobacco, big pharma, big entertainment, big CPG aren't coming, they're here. Um, and so, you know, is big banking and big government far behind? Um, you know, I think it's um, something that's commonplace in all industries and, um, you know, in, in terms of retailing, you, you know, that's what you got to face. But, um, you know, hoping that, uh, you know, it continues. I mean, hopefully, hopefully the growth is, um, you know, uh, sort of continuously, yeah, continuous rather than, you know, sudden changes, I think. Oh, um, yeah, and there's a, there's, there's a pent up, this will be decades in the making, right? Even yeah. if, if we get federal uh, legalization tomorrow to, to roll up states like Washington or Oregon or Michigan or Oklahoma, I mean, these are thousands and thousands and thousands of licensees uh, and, um, and growers and processors and retailers. And, and so that will be a long process and there'll be opportunity for folks. Um, uh, uh, two things, one, tell us where we can go to get more information and I'll leave it up to you to take the last word and uh, you know, the last thought. Um, OneTechPlatform.com, um, reach, reach, re reach out to us on that. Um, and I'm hoping to, I'll, I'm happy to speak to anybody that would you know, lend an ear. Fantastic. Alan, thank you so much for uh, making time for Marijuana Channel One. Um, super interested. I'm really glad that we met. And um, I hope that you will take the time in the coming year to touch bases again. I think it's going to be a crazy year uh, for cannabis normalization. And obviously, the fintech uh, element is key to that normalization. So thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks. Cheers.